Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Today I'm tuning this FX Impact M3 air rifle in FAC specification to use the FX hybrid slugs. This is 22 calibre and it's a 22 grain slug and I'm going to be tuning the hammers, valves, etc. regulators to make sure it's giving me the best performance on paper possible. The first thing to remember is to set the barrel up for slugs, which in the case of this FX means I turned it through 90 degrees to present the larger transfer port for better airflow. Before you do any kind of tuning, make sure your air bottle is full to FX's recommended pressures. It's pointless trying to tune a rifle without stable support underneath it to make sure each shot is as consistent as possible. Make sure you're using every possible opportunity you have to stabilise the rifle when aimed and shot. Because I hunt from a bipod, I tend to use a bipod and a supporting rear bag under the buttstock to keep the rifle stable. At every stage of adjustment, make sure you're taking notes of all the regulator pressures and the settings on items like the macro and micro adjusters for the hammer spring. Don't forget the final stage regulator pressure underneath the cheek piece by the magazine. Be sure to note variation in wind speed and direction while shooting. Take note of pellets you think were specifically bad shots on your part versus shots that seem to have gone awry because of wind change variations you didn't notice or compensate for. I would say it's absolutely vital to use a chronograph when tuning an air gun. Recording the variation in pellet speed and consistency in pellet speed after adjustment there doesn't seem to be a specific best way to tune an FX, but I went with the process of adjusting the valve first, then the macro adjuster second to make sure I was in the desired speed region. Next, I altered the second stage regulator until this power level was reached with ease and it became noticeable the rifle itself made a more precise, crisper firing sound. My fourth stage was to go back to the primary valve to check a variety of settings to see what was happening over the chronograph for consistency and also for group size on paper at a range where I was most able to rule out external atmospheric variation. The final step was rechecking the macro and micro adjusters for optimum performance on paper and also shot to shot speed consistency. This may sound excessive, but it's what's worked for me, and now when I change projectiles, I've learned to shortcut some of the steps from previous experience. I can change barrels and calibers more quickly, and I take careful notes of previous settings to make sure when I do swap back to a previously used setup, I can go back to my known firing solutions. Make sure the slugs are a smooth fit in the magazine which can rotate freely and that they're not protruding from the port at the front. If you damage these or slice them off, they'll cause great inconsistency to the accuracy and precision of your rifle. Inspecting the slugs direct from the packet shows a bright polished finish and deep cavity for the internal hollow point. Throughout the box of 100 slugs, weight variation never exceeded 0.1 grain from the 22 grain stated weight. The overall length of the slugs is 0.316 inches or 8 millimetres. Diameter is 0.214 inches or 5.4 millimetres. The G1 ballistic coefficient is listed at 0 0.080. I find this works as a good starting point, but eventually I settled on 0 0.077 for longer range shooting solutions. I never went further than 125 metres at this time then. Never alter the macro or micro power adjusters when the rifle is cocked. I always start tuning with the main valve adjuster, one step at a time. When tuning the regulators, it's a lot easier using a ball tipped Allen key, but you can remove the trigger guard to give you more access. You'll be making a lot of shots whilst tuning and using a lot of air. Keep your bottle handy to make sure you can keep topping up to full pressure. He can see the rifle is now failing to make satisfactory first stage regulator pressure. This is because the main fill bottle has dropped below the pressure required. Pressure on the second regulator is now also suboptimum. After refilling the main bottle to max pressure, we can see it's full of air. After cocking and firing the rifle once, we can see the first stage regulator pressure has now returned back to normal values. Second stage regulator pressure is now indicating previous power levels. 
increasing second stage regulator pressure using a two and a half millimeter allen key behind the trigger within the trigger guard has given extra gains in speed for more tuning opportunities. I found this is particularly important when moving to larger calibers than 2.2, particularly the 30 caliber. The sweet spot for any projectile in terms of accuracy and precision is rarely at the most powerful setting, so beware of chasing speed alone. At 1,030 feet per second, I noticed another specific accuracy node for this pellet type. The more you work at tuning with different projectiles, the better you'll get at doing it. I'm by no means an expert, but I'm learning a lot along the way. I like the fact it's easy to adjust the controls and there are relevant markings so you can record your settings. This makes it easy to return if you decide you've gone in the wrong direction and you want to start from where you were before. It's also great if you change calibers on the rifle because you can note down for every barrel and caliber set you use exactly the best setting, which will give you immediate results on target, whether using pellets or with slugs. I'm quite happy with this result on paper for hunting requirements at 50 meters. This has been shot in real world conditions, so there is wind variation and it's moving things around a little bit on target. I think it's very hard to accept one hole groups when practicing in real world conditions, and realistically when hunting, you can't choose the wind condition and the exact moment you're going to take the shot, and how consistent you want your rifle to be. Personally, I will always go for reliability without any flyers thrown over the very smallest group with one flyer. Performance on rats has certainly been very consistent and I've tuned the rifle for most speed to give me the most power at short range. That doesn't necessarily mean I want to use that speed full power for longer range shooting because I prefer a slightly slower tune ironically for longer distances. This means I stay well clear of any transonic flight speed and being between 850 and 950 feet per second at the muzzle has given me the most consistency for all uses and I will stick with this long term now. Shooting rats out to 50 meters showed distinctly advantageous terminal performance. For longer shots, especially on feral pigeons out to 75 and even 100 meters, the slugs were ballistically much flatter shooting and more consistent from shot to shot than pellets ever are. I for one am not going to spend all my day shoot one, one whole group, keep it in my wallet forever and claim that's what the gun does every time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that review of me tuning my rifle for the FX Hybrid slugs. Please like, please subscribe, please comment because your comments are what drive me to make more videos. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see the weekly uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.